So the Galaxy A5 has been updated for 2017, bringing with it some features from the Galaxy S7 and also adopting a similar design language. The A5 aims to tempt those looking for a solid mid-range device with great day-to-day -day performance and a premium look and build. At £369, you may say the A5 is a great alternative to the OnePlus 3T, which is a great phone which does surpass the A5 in performance, but it can be hard to explain A, who OnePlus are, and B, what the hell a 3T is. Wrapped in glass and flanking an aluminium subframe, the A5 looks really great, especially in this black sky colour finishing here. It is a slippery beast though, getting covered in fingerprints and smudges within mere minutes, so do get ready with a polishing cloth if you want to keep this looking at its best. To temper this, you can get a cheap case, there are plenty available around the web, there are some Samsung ones which are a little bit expensive but which do look good. Now I chose this cheap Olexar one from Mobile Fun, which does the job just fine even if it is a little basic. There's not much protection around the corners but all the cutouts are really clean and makes the phone look good at the same time. As you can see, it does allow some protection with the raised lip just coming just up over the size of the screen so it drops on the floor, may protect the screen but I wouldn't take my chance, perhaps get a tempered glass screen protector. On the whole though, the case looks good with the phone inside it, doesn't really ruin the aesthetics or the looks of the phone. At the back of the phone, we have a brand new 16 megapixel main camera which is joined by a singular LED flash but with no optical image stabilization, 60 frames per second or 4K video, this may not suit the most hardened of mobile photographers, but it does the job just fine in the right conditions, I'll show you some pictures later. At the front of the phone, the A5 introduces a brand new fingerprint scanner. This is integrated into the hardware home key and it's decently fast and mostly accurate, although there were a few times it did fail to recognise my fingerprints. Up to three of these can be set in case you've got one hand full and they need to use the other. At the top of the screen, there's a brand new 16 megapixel selfie camera with a wide angle lens and the ability to record 1080p video. Its performance is nothing amazing though, but it just does the trick for people who love to take selfies. Next to this is the earpiece, and in all situations I found this to be great quality with good tone and volume when talking to everyone else. On the surrounding edges, we have the usual array of buttons with power on the right hand side, volume rockers to the left and up top, the micro SD card slot and the single SIM tray tucked down to the left. At the bottom, we welcome a USB Type-C to the mix, and thanks to Samsung's quick charge technology, this allows the A5 to recharge from 0 to 100% in around 90 minutes. We do welcome the 3.5mm headphone jack, and the speaker is now moved up to the right hand side above the power key. The quality is nothing great though, with iffy shrill sound quality and not much volume. The phone is wrapped up and protected with IP68 water and dust resistance, which means 30 minutes in 1.5 meters of water. Next up is the display, a 5.2 inch Full HD Super AMOLED display covered in Gorilla Glass 4 and with 2.5D glass which tapers off to the left and right sides of the phone. This is a really excellent display with typical inky AMOLED blacks and a punchy sat saturated colours which is synonymous with pretty much all the Samsung displays out there. It's really sharp with text looking crisp and photos and videos enjoyably smooth. Of course, you can temper the colours by selecting from a variety of colour, ba colour balance schemes to suit your liking. To try them, simply go into the settings, select display and if you just press the screen mode option, this allows you to select from four different presets which allows you to, to tailor the screen to pretty much how you like it. Now keeping the show running is Samsung's own Exynos 7880 octa-core processor. It's got 3 gigs of RAM and a Mali T830 MP3 GPU handling graphics. On the whole, I found the A5 to be no slouch in day-to-day -day use, offering nippy performance and quick navigation even with plenty of apps running in the background. Now I don't really care for benchmarks, they don't really tell you the whole story, but just for those interested, I have done a whole video showing the A5's performance on the GFX benchmark tests for those who really care.
So allowing the show to stay on the road is a 3000 mAh battery and I found the A5 to be an excellent performer in this regard, easily allowing a whole day of views and then some more. Also the standby time is absolutely tremendous, so you won't be left stranded if you switched off your phone for a few days. I left this in a cupboard for one whole week at 99%, took it out a week later and it was still at 99%. Software wise, well if you're hoping for Android Nuggets, this is perhaps the only small fly in the ointment. A5 comes running 6.01 Marshmallow out of the box, although this isn't necessarily a bad thing, as the Samsung Grace UX has made its way from the Galaxy Note 7 and the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge. This looks and feels absolutely great. You get the usual vast set of menus and customizations, including the Samsung's theme store, and there's also Microsoft apps on board. So when we look at the theme store, there are lots and lots and lots of themes to choose from. Me personally, I prefer to, prefer to use Nova Launcher, but here I'll just show you a quick demo of how it all works. Day-to-day -day use, the A5 is an absolute mid-range champ, showing us how far things have really come back from my Galaxy S4 days. It's one of those phones I found really hard to put down, and the only odd stutter here and there spoils the show a little. Connectivity-wise, it's also well catered for, with 4G LTE, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi all keeping the phone solidly connected at all times. Onto those cameras, well, for the most part, the main camera offers decent photo quality, although there can be some overexposure in bright conditions, and there's a lot of saturation most of the time. The lack of optical image stabilization does mean videos can be a bit bumpy, and this is one thing that I do miss from using my OnePlus 3T. Front facing camera offers decent detail, but the 1080p video does leave a lot to be desired. But enough of me talking, here's a little montage so you can make up your own mind. Sit yourself down, girl, and
it is, folks, the Galaxy A5. A great mid-range offering from Samsung and certainly worthy of a place in your bags and your pockets. After a solid month of usage, I've become quite attached and would most definitely recommend this to anyone looking for a solid phone with great specs under the £400 mark. As always, thanks very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more great content coming soon. I'm Mr. West, this is me, my review of the Galaxy A5 2017, and I'll catch you guys later.